start our, our, our epic journey to, to beverage. Previously on the Desert Dogs. We are en route to the ghost town of Beverage. It's one of the most difficult hikes in the Inyo Mountains and here in the Mojave Desert. Today is May 13th, Friday the 13th. It's really close to the So then when we back it up, there's a momentum shift that allows the SUV to basically do that. Science, baby. Good job. Science. Guys. <laughs> All right, we are on the western side of Saline Valley, and there's a uh, passing by a lake. We're almost at our turn off. We stopped briefly at the foot of the mountain. Parts of it looked positively unscalable. In the distance, a white cliff seemingly soared straight up. We would eventually have to climb that. However, we had burned a lot of fuel, time, and energy from the hours prior to this. The reputation of Friday the 13th as an unlucky day loomed over the puny Toyota 4Runner, perhaps higher even than the mountain which stood like a monolith before us. I broke the silence. This is at the foot of Beverage Canyon. Other way. Other way. We were able to make it about a half mile. The two-wheel drive forerunner clambering over rocks until we came across boulders so large that we could not drive over them. We exited the vehicle to gear up Alright, we didn't go too far. In fact, I think uh, you could kind of fill in what, what happened right here. <laughs> we uh, tried to get up the dirt road as far as we could. As you can see, you got really, really tallow slope. And now Danny's driving down to a little bit of a turnout so we don't park right in the middle of the road in case somebody else can get ahead of us here. And we dropped our packs here to save more time from walking uphill. And as soon as Danny catches back up to us, we'll head on up. The trail, snowflake. We were prepared for what was reported as a strenuous hike that can be done in two days. We had about a gallon of water each, backpacking food, and we each brought a bottle of Gatorade to consume on the way up. We also had individual tents and sleeping bags. In essence, we were planning on something similar to Panamint City. Difficult, but stretched over two days. I think we might have only hiked less than a mile, and uh, I think we're all feeling it right now. How you doing, Richard? Unfortunately, we had not left our bad luck behind in the Santa Rosa Hills. Within an hour, Richard busted the mouthpiece of his hydration system, and it began leaking water. Marty, on the other hand, was drinking too much water, and yet still began to feel the effects of dehydration. Alright, it's raining a little bit right now. I think we don't got too much further to go, thankfully. And tonight we might take refuge in a mine just for a little bit. Alright, this is our home for the night. This is right around the area of the Snowflake Talc Mine. Alright, so it is morning time now. 
Um, just woke up, I think it's six o'clock in the morning. And uh, getting a really good view from our, our campsite. And um, you can see uh, I'm inside my tent. But I can see the ridges of the mountain that we have to climb. Check it out. And then down here is the canyon that I slept next to. The next day I heard buzzing outside of my tent. Little black flies were swarming our camp. I didn't know it yet, but they were also eating us alive. And it seems that we're being, uh, well, I'm, we're sitting here on the side of the, the mountain and it looks like we're being bit, bitten by a bunch of little tiny, I thought they were just gnats, but these guys are actually drawing blood and I'm not sure if you can see it, but all those little blood marks are from these little bastards. Ah, just got me again. <laughs> as soon as I left my tent, Richard reported that he was running low on water. Since I had a surplus, I gave him an extra one and a half liter bottle. Immediately afterward, Marty told me he was running out of water. So I gave him my other one and a half liter bottle. We now each had about one and a half liters of water to make the rest of the way to beverage. What happened next was inevitable. Okay, I'm either, I mean, right, right now when I was climbing up, I felt like like sweating bullets. Yeah. So I like I know I'm losing a lot of water, but then when the wind comes around, like right now I feel fine. Perfect. I thought I could walk again. You like, but it really, yeah, hell, what's going on, not. man? With the amount of water we have, without <clears throat> all this weight, can we get there and yeah. get back out? In time to camp. And we're also assuming there's water over there, too. What's well, about a six mile yeah. hike, you think, Andrew? You said? Yeah, we're assuming. Yeah. yeah. You still consume a lot of water. Yeah, even yeah. yeah you finish it. Every time you're up. We're drawing out. Yeah. You know? Like you said, it feels like it's in Costa Rica, and that's what, kind of what it's yeah. like. I'm just afraid we get there and there's the stream is dry. That's why the rangers have never tell you nothing. Since we were ill equipped to, um, to make this hike, we probably only climbed another half mile. So, we're going to go to plan B. And we're gonna we have to go we're gonna go back to the gas station and gas up. When we finally made it back to the vehicle, we realized we had another dilemma waiting to be solved. A lack of gas. When we were lost in Santa Rosa Hills, we had burned a lot of fuel getting to the point where we got lost. Now we had a little less than a quarter tank of gas. We figured our best bet was to head north toward Big Pine. And fortunately, we were able to make it running on fumes. Big Pine is between 70 and 100 miles away. We decided to spend the night at a favorite fishing spot called Tinamaha Creek. So here's a beetle. It's um, in the family's gravity. And what's interesting about that is that it's so furry all around its body. And a possibility is that it, a lot of these beetles do feed on flowers, so it, it might be a way of transferring pollen from one flower to another. What's also cool about these scarabs is that in ancient Egypt, they actually revered these insects. You uh, see them like in hieroglyphics and statues that are made by these. And today, these beetles sometimes are used as jewelry. People dry them up, they wear them as jewelry. And some of them, get their, their shells crushed and used in makeup that a lot of people don't realize. And the reason is because some of them are really colorful, really bright. It's a really diverse family, so you would get a lot of metallic colors to this. So uh, you ladies out there real, realize that some of your makeup probably is... I spent a bitter night thinking about our failure and I vowed to return to beverage. This is what we learned about traveling in the remote Saline Valley and our hike to beverage. 
whether or not it is Friday the 13th, it is mandatory to bring extra gas, more water, a car jack, and a shovel. Yes, a four-wheel drive vehicle is preferable by a long shot, but we currently don't have access to a vehicle like that anymore. The Desert Dogs, who are basically a bunch of guys who do this for the fun of it, have felt the brunt of the Great Recession ourselves. So, we make do with what we can. Next time we're going back up this mountain, and we will make it to Beverage. Our plan of attack? More water. Two gallons each. I'm Andrew Perry. Let's try and keep it reasonable out there. To all you critics out there, we came prepared. This time, we got a gas can, an e-tool, military shovel, five gallon jug of water, car jack, and some bacon spam. Yeah. 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 No, thank you. Yeah. Lettuce, tomato, onion? Yes, please. And a salad? It comes with fries and a salad. It does, guys? Okay. Choices. Blue cheese. Blue cheese. And she's giving me a chocolate shake. Chocolate shake? Okay. I'll have the black rock burger. Two lettuce, tomato, onion? Yes. Fries, onion rings. Uh, onion rings. Yes, yeah. All right, and I'll get the uh, Alabama Hills. Lettuce, tomato, onion? Uh, yes. Oh. Fries, onion rings, soup, salad. Yeah, I'll get onion rings. Onion rings? Yeah. Awesome. Something to drink for you, bud? The chocolate shakes are Oh, that's it. <laughs> yeah. But I'll take a water, water. too right now. Water would be cool right now. Um, uh, I think I'm just going to get Sam Adams. Sam Adams? Yeah. Thanks, Sam. What do you got there, Rich? I have a chocolate shake. And it's made very well because they have a little chocolate swirl on the top of that. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Looks good. Just waiting for my burger. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are, yeah. <laughs> That's really good. It's a Tom, Tom, Tom Selleck, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that one, yeah, yeah. What up, you missed you? I was having a house burger. Oh, right here. Mount Whitney? I think it's probably me. I had a regular burger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Number three, Boulder Creek. Cheap. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's me. That's me. All right, so how would you rate Mount Whitney restaurant? Uh, so I would say um, the food was great actually. They have the nice, thick, crispy bacon. The service was great. The interior was actually really good because I have a bunch of pictures of Western um, actors and all that. I would give it a 10. The thing is, I'm actually giving it a nine. And the only reason I'm taking this point off is because the outside is not really appealing. So if, if if I didn't know about the restaurant, I would have just driven right off. But for me, my final number would be a nine for that restaurant. Right. Rich? I've always rated it a 10 myself. I've eaten there many times. I love that place. Uh, breakfasts are unbelievable. Big pancakes. Uh, that's one of my favorite places in Long Pine. Marty? Hello. 
I would like to rate it a nine because I enjoyed the food. It was a good chili cheeseburger that I had, but it wasn't the best, but it was really good. Uh, the service was excellent. Um, everybody seemed down to earth. And that's pretty much why I give it a nine. <laughs> I think I'd give it a nine too, for all the reasons previously stated. And onion rings. And I don't think that they would actually serve those onion rings on airplanes because they were the bomb. Ha, 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 ha.